Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. The blazer is back. Yeah, that's alright. Um, the steering box was wore out on this thing. The sector shaft was wobbling back and forth. Yeah, that'll cause her to uh, wander around a little bit. So anyways, I've basically run out of parts on this thing to replace. Uh, upper lower ball joints, inner and outer tie rod ends, uh, steering box, pitman arm, and the idler arm. Uh, we could do bushings, but they're not terrible. So I'm going to let those roll. So anyways, the reason for this video is to do a garage precise alignment with a, a digital gauge, a digital angle gauge. And we can get it really close. I've done it. And, you know, if, when you go get new tires, you get alignment. And it's in the green. So usually do a very good job on these things and I will put a linky down in the thingy uh, for the procedure that I use and it's on the ham guy did a great job uh, lining everything out and all we have to do is set up some strings get our uh, angle gauge out and I'll show you all those steps so next step is going to be to run strings Oh, one more thing before I forget. We just got it down on the ground so the suspension's in a bind from the tires being uh, at full droop. So you're going to have to back her up and roll her back in a little bit. And then I'm going to park them on some just really cheap floor tiles. So that way when we're turning the wheels, they act like turn plates. And I kind of have my marks on the ground from last time I did it. So I'm going to try to hit them again, but I'll show you exactly what those look like. So I'm going to roll this out, put these in, roll her back up on there, and uh, run my strings. Alright, first step in our journey, I've got four jack stands, two on each side, with my nice little string strung between them. And I've got these up high, about the center of the tire, or off the pinch rail. Um, on the rockers so that we can get good measurements side to side um, I will enlist the help of my little buddy and we'll run back and forth make sure that the strings are square so the distance between them front and back is exactly the same and then that the and also that the blazer is square within these and it's going to take us a little bit of time to run around and keep measuring you got to leave a little bit of room up here that might be a little bit too tight because we're going to be turning the front wheels back and forth that's why we put those little vinyl tiles underneath there so that it rotates easy because uh, we're going to be turning the wheel back and forth and that will give us our caster measurements camber is easy and then tow off of the strings is easy once we get all this set up so Tape measures ho. Okay, so we're going to find the center of this, which is right there. We're going to draw a line parallel to our string, and it's going to be a foot both ways. So I'm just eyeballing from the string. To my ruler, make sure that it's straight. Okay. And then from the end of that foot, four and three quarters up. What that does gives us 20 degrees, and that's how far we will turn the tires as we're measuring caster. So we're going to do this on the other side, 
and uh, get ready to uh, start some measuring. Okay, we got our little K's drawn, our strings are set, chuck square within the strings, and this is where the uh, digital angle finder comes in. I've got toe close-ish, um, so you're always going to have to constantly be, so like, if we look at this wheel, camber on this is a degree plus or minus and I'm about a degree 0.2, 1.2 degrees where the top of the tire is tipped in. So we're going to have to get in there and adjust those camber bolts and bring it out. I'll probably bring them both square and then of course we're going to have to reset toe because as we move this it's going to pull the tie rod's going to pull the front in and we're going to have to make sure that we keep the steering wheel centered. Remember there's a little bit of slop in it so try to keep equal amounts on both sides. Also importantly double check your air pressures make sure everything's squared up um, so it sits level and we're going to give her a go here this side is by far the worst with camber and then we're gonna check caster so first you got to get this set and then you start rotating the tire fore and aft or left and right you're gonna double check your measurements again and I'll show you how to do that calculation uh, when we get this thing squared away so let me find the wrenches for this and uh, we're gonna get the caster or the camber set see if you can read that uh, probably not. Right at 90. 89.9. So close enough. Um, gonna go check the other side uh, for camber. That's the top of the tire in and out. And then we will check caster. Alright, so we got camber set. And then now is when that K we drew on the floor, see, I, you can still kind of barely see mine, so I just redrew it. What that's going to let us do is turn the wheel precisely, well, eyeballing, 20 degrees. You want to eyeball that for me, son? That was good, but we're hitting the string. Yeah, I know, I saw that. So there you go, move your strings out a little more. Now what we're gonna do is measure, trying to keep this as vertical as we can. We're gonna get our measurements here. Eighty-eight point one. So from ninety. I'm 1.9 degrees. Turn it 20 degrees the other way. This one I can eyeball. That uh, looks pretty good. eighty nine point four so we are point six now what do the instructions say directions from ninety add those together one point five two point five multiply that times 1.5 2.5 times 1.5 3.75 degrees of caster eh, that's not bad let's check the other side see how it is 
All right, so left side, we got three and three quarters degree of caster. On the right side, we have one degree. Spec is, uh, they're pretty wide open. It says zero to three. I'm gonna try to get this closer to two and this closer to three. And what that's gonna do, so the left side is gonna have a little bit more caster. That's the top ball joint tipping back. And what that does is help pull the car up the road crown. A little bit more caster on the driver's side helps pull it up the road crown. So we're going to work on that a little bit, loosen up some other bolts, get these wheels straight again, uh, throw a little bit more caster on this side and less caster on that side. Rinse and repeat, that's all there is to it. And then we'll go back over the, uh, we'll go back over toe real quick. All right, so on this thing we have camber bolts. So this side's the nut, on the other side is the bolt. And they have these big old eccentric washers. You have one in the front and one on the back, which is back here. That's the back. For the driver's side, we need to reduce the amount of caster. So to do that, the fore one, we're going to drive this arm in a little bit. The back one, we're going to pull it out a little bit. And we could probably do just a skosh and then recheck our camber. And then we can remeasure for caster. All right. Well, we were at 0.7 before. I overshot it, of course backed off a little bit 1.95 that's three on the driver's side two on the passenger side I don't like a huge amount of uh, cross camber what they call it a bit is good all roads are different they're all screwy and of course you're gonna over critique your work uh, how it feels where it's pulling you gotta drive it for about a week <laughs> so now I'm going to recenter everything. You gotta make sure the the play in the steering wheel is about as centered as you can get it. And once then we are going to double check our toe. This is what wears tires, his toe, really. Everything else is kind of handling camber a little bit so we are three and three eighths weak which is just on the other side of three and three eighths and we are three and a quarter strong so that looks to be about an eighth inch on one wheel a little bit too much we want about a sixteenth on each wheel eighth total so the outside tie rod on this thing is a correct right-handed thread so that means I'm gonna pull up on the front and we recheck Didn't really change a whole heck of a lot. Let's recheck the centering of the steering wheel. We may have, uh, yep, we may have moved the other one a little bit. It always happens. Because don't forget your driver's side's a bit heavier than your passenger side. Just because of all that steering gear. Well, that's looking good to me. We'll go do the other side for tow. And then we're done. Thanks for hanging out with me. This, uh, this whole project took me maybe about three hours now, total. Uh, with dicking with casters the worst. I don't know. I like the old school 
stuff with the shims because as soon as this breaks these cam bolts as soon as they break loose it seems it moves a lot and then you got to come back and fight with it anyhow thanks for hanging out with me I'll uh, report back and tell you how this thing is uh, is riding well uh, mini me took uh, mama Sita to the uh, pet store need more kitten toys um, I just sent him blind uh, with the blazer and he took the long way around town hit some nice roads hit some shitty roads and says it's uh, track straight and much better than what it used to be so all the uh, all the slop was in that so this gets taken back to the Oh really? And I get my core back, but that uh, that blazer will be good for another shop kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Hi, little girl. Shop kitty. You've been hiding. You haven't been on camera for a while. There's a good girl. So that one's all done, and it'll be good for another friggin' decade of uh, puttering around town. All right, uh, we're. Next project's coming up. We're going to clean up that old motor. Try to get some schmoo off of it. Put it on the new engine stand so it's not so scary walking past. And then we'll dig out the new project. Alright? Hit that likey, likey, likey button. Or subscribe button. And uh, hang out for a little bit. Wait.